What is parallaxing and how do we use the camera in Adobe Animate? Let's find out. Tip tot. Hello everybody and welcome back to Tip Tart and to Intro to Adobe Animate 2021. In this episode, we'll work with our camera to add a simple parallax to our scene using Animate's inbuilt layer depth. Now, I will say that I've already made a complete and comprehensive episode on just using the camera that I'm very, very proud of. So if you've got 10 minutes, I'd go and watch that episode first as it covers literally everything you need to know about the camera. In this episode, we'll just quickly explore what you need to know as a beginner. So let's get right to it. Number eight, camera and parallaxing. The camera is a separate object in Adobe Animate, and you can set a layer depth which determines how far away each layer is from the virtual camera. When you move the camera, the layers respond accordingly, and the effect of these layers moving in perspective is known as parallaxing. Disney perfected the physical parallax camera back in the 1930s, but nowadays it's all done digitally. Let's jump into our scene and add some simple zoom in out camera movement. Okay, so let's take a look at adding a camera and some layer depth to our scene. Now, adding a camera is very simple. You just press the C button on the keyboard and it will create a new camera layer for you here. Um, it gives you this camera control panel when you've got your camera layer selected. And using this, you can drag in or out to zoom. And you'll notice that it zooms everything that's on your stage. You can release and drag again if you reach the end of this bar as well to keep continuing and going further and further. If you switch to rotate mode, you can also do the same by rotating something on your stage. Now, every layer that is not uh, unlocked from the camera, so every layer that is locked to the camera will ignore this. And you can lock a layer to the camera um, by clicking this icon here, which will attach or detach all of them, which means that if you drag this, nothing happens. If you want to do that for individual layers, you obviously just click individual layers and it will unlock them so that they do not react to the camera. OK, could be quite useful if you wanted something to be attached to the camera. OK, so uh, what I'm going to do now is set up the layer depth so that as we zoom in, it doesn't all move um, at the same level or same speed. We want it to react to the camera as if it wasn't just on a flat plane. OK, so the way we do that is by setting up layer depth. Now, I do recommend you set up your layer depth before you do any animation, because as you can see here, when I start doing this, you have to set it up for each keyframe which can be a right pain in the butt if you've got a lot of keyframes. So if you don't have this panel, you just need to go to Window and then uh, Layer Depth, and it will open up this panel for you. And this triangle here represents the camera with the large side of the triangle representing your canvas, OK? And as you can see, on each of our layers here, uh, we we'll need to rename this one Sound. Um, on each of the layers here, we have a number next to them. If I were to push this number, for example, this grass, closer to the camera, you'd see that green line moving correspondingly and further away from the camera, again, moving correspondingly. Now, we've already drawn all of our content, so you'll notice it scales up and down as you do this. If you don't want it to scale up and down, you can just click Maintain Size and then type in or drag a number here. I'm just going to put this one to negative 300, which puts it closer to the camera. You'll see it's moved much closer, but it's maintained the correct size. Now, we've done that on the grass layer here, but if I actually go to my next keyframe, it's put it back to zero, so I have to put it maintain size, negative 300 again. And the idea is anything that's closer to the camera, really close, you'll be past this line. Anything that's further away, you want to be um, past the other line here. So I'm going to leave my bouncing character at zero because that's the focus point. And everything else, we're going to push just in various increments behind it. Uh, so this man, for example, I would maintain size because I've already set him to the size I want to be. And let's just stick him at 200. You'll notice there his feet popped behind the grass because the grass or the ground at least is at zero. So we will be fixing that, don't worry. Now, this guy's got quite a few keyframes, so we'll just go through and do that to all of them. Um, and I'll be fast forwarding through uh, all of these. Sorry, he just disappeared behind the mountain there, but it's because I haven't done the mountain yet. Uh, I'll be fast forwarding through all of this because it's just a case of picking a number and seeing if uh, you like it, which is why it's good to do this without any keyframes in place. So I'm just going to go through and add the rest of these layers. Um, for example, the cactus I'd probably put at 300, the floor at 400, and then the mountains and clouds way back in the distance because you don't really want them to move. So I'll just nip through and do that now. OK, so I've pushed all of these layers back now. And as you can see uh, from the numbers here, I've just pushed them further and further back. The more far they would back actually be in real life. Wow, was that a sentence? I pushed them further back. The more further back they would be in real life is what I meant to say. So my grass, very close. My bounce layer on zero. 
my man just behind that, my cactus just behind the man, my floor very close but behind the cactus, um, mountains about a thousand in the distance, clouds two thousand, sun two thousand five hundred, and the sky five thousand. What this means is when I come to my camera layer now and open up my camera tool with C, for example, if I were to move everything around like this, you can see that my um, grass here moves much faster in position than my sky or my sun or my clouds because they're way, way, way behind uh, the camera in the layer depth. Okay, so what I could do is put a keyframe here and here, for example, pop a keyframe in the middle. So we're at frame 36. So let's make it frame 19. Add a keyframe to my camera. Press my C tool to bring my camera up. Maybe zoom in a little bit. And pan down as if we're moving closer to the ground. Something like that. Now, whether or not I'll keep this, don't know. It's just to uh, show you. If I right click those, just use classic tween. That'll animate the camera in the same way that you animate another keyframe. Let's go to classic ease. And on this first one here, let's have it ease out. So it goes um, fast to slow. Cubic or quad. And let's do the same thing here, but easing in like so. So we'll get a nice, nice bouncing effect like so. So let's test our movie with Control Enter. Wait for it to export the Swift. And as you can see now, we have our camera moving. I'll just stop that because it's going to go over and over. Uh, we have our camera moving in and out and with the rest of our objects in accordance to it. Now, would you really use it for a scene like this? I don't know. Probably not, but it helps to explain what we use it for. Uh, go check out the full camera tutorial if you want it. I kind of rushed it here a little bit uh, just to give you guys a brief overview of what you can do with the camera. Uh, if you want a full detailed one, just go to the camera tutorial. Well, that's it for now. Next time, we're going to be taking a look at actually exporting this animation finally, and I'll show you all the different ways that you can do that and the reasons that you might want to choose those different ways. So stick around. You've done really well to get so far. Hopefully, you've made something that you're proud of, and I'll see you next time on another episode of Tip Top. Massive thank yous to my delightful and lovely level two members WN62, Anonymous, Mel M. Hoover, Maybe Sharma, Ranaka M, Ian Costello, Dushant, Singe, Lone Wolf 16, Starry Teachy, Katmar, and JK Digital Creations. You guys are super lovely. If you would like to become a member of the Tip Tut Zone and become a Tip Titan yourself, just click that join button below. <laughs>